Welcome to Sicily for round number four of the 1966 World Sports Car Championship. Here, of course, for the Targa Florio. This is part 19 of the 1966 season where I take on the role of Richie Axelson, our intrepid racing driver, and race through a whole season of different racing events. The Targa Florio marks the end of the first half of the World Sports Car Championship, and thus far, it's been a very good championship for Richie and the Ford team. Starting way back at Daytona with a win, a floundering performance at Sebring for the 12 hour, but then back on it for Monza last time out, across the high banks for the 1,000 kilometers, taking the win in the wet. And after a brief stop at Syracuse for an exciting non-championship Formula One round, we're back with the sports cars just one week later in Sicily. The Targa Florio is an event unlike any other, run in time trial format over the massive 72 kilometer Piccolo de Madone circuit. The Targa Florio will test even the greatest of racing drivers. The 72 kilometers of the Piccolo de Madone are legendary. It's a very tight and twisty course for the large majority of it, but there are a few long straightaways, namely the Buenfrenello straight right at the end of the lap. It's a circuit which rewards consistency and circuit knowledge. It's not always the quickest car which wins the Targa Florio. It's the most talented driver. The real life race in 1966 was set up to be a barn burner with favorite Nino Vaccarella teaming up with Lorenzo Bandini in the brand new Ferrari 330 P3. They were the sure favorites to win the race. But just six laps into the 10 lap contest, right after Lorenzo Bandini took over from Nino Vaccarella, a freak rain shower created treacherous conditions which ultimately led to Bandini wrecking the 330 and handing the win over to Porsche. So Herbert Mueller and Willy Morese came away with the win in the Porsche 906, a car not nearly as fast in a straight line as the Ferrari, but around the turns could hold its own at the Targa Florio and its consistency that'll win you the race. The entry list for the Targa Florio is always more varied than the other world sports car events, with many smaller sports and GT teams making up the very long entry list. Just a few of the top teams would enter every year. So in our edition, just as in real life, both Shelby American and Holman and Moody have not entered the race with the four GT Mark IIs. The car itself, not very well suited for a circuit like this. And with three top place finishes this season for Ford, it's not really a necessary event for the team itself to come and win. So with Holman and Moody not entering the race, Richie was free to find another ride and found one with the Ford France team, normally piloted by Guy Ligier. They've decided to enter a second car for Richie Axelson and Richie Ginther to try their best around the Targa Florio. Ford France's second car is a regular Ford GT, not the Mark II edition. So it's down on power a bit, but it's a little bit lighter of a car and is ultimately more suited for a circuit like the Targa Florio. And it's still a rocket ship in the straight line. So we'll have a little worse of a car through the corners than some of the others, but on the straightaways, we'll have absolutely no problem rocketing by. And we'll need all the extra speed we can get to pass some cars. Practice days, like usual, set the starting order for the race. And although it's not a head-to-head -head competition, you do want to start towards the front, be one of the first cars let go so that you don't run into as much traffic. But we had some issues on the practice days and we'll be starting all the way back in 24th overall to get going. There's quite a few GT cars and things behind us, but we even have a few GT cars in front of us and we'll catch up to them pretty quickly on the first lap around the circuit. So it was Nino Vaccarella and Lorenzo Bandini turning the quickest laps in practice in their Ferrari 330. So they'll be starting up front with no traffic in front of them, able to set nice, clear laps. But Guy Ligier starting in second with the Ford GT and Scarfiati and Parks with their 206 Dino starting third. So we'll have to pass a lot of cars, some GT cars as well, to try to get towards the front. But ultimately, it's just based on time. So if we can get some clear road, we're in just as good a position as anybody. So for the points this season, it's been all about Ford, but with Ford not entering their major teams and Ferrari bringing their big guns, this one will be an uphill battle to see if we can come out on top. This race will likely be the toughest yet for the Richie Axelson career. The real race, like I said, took place over 10 laps of the circuit and keeping with the 30% distance that we've been doing all season. That'll mean three laps, just three laps of the circuit, but coming in at over 35 minutes per lap, it's quite a distance to cover. So we'll take the car for the first lap, come in, give the car to Richie Ginther for the second lap, and then take it back over to speed to the finish. Ultimately, the main goal is to just keep it on the track. The Targa Florio demands driving style, much like rally racing, but you don't have a co-driver. So let's get started with it. The ultimate test in endurance road racing, the Targa Florio.
Alright, so here we are at the start finish line near the train station at Cherda. Ready to begin. The timer goes three, two, one. We're underway for the Targa Florio. I'll try to rock it away from the start finish line past all the spectators and get settled on the road towards Cherda. Nice and easy with cold tires, full fuel. This is one of the faster parts of the circuit. Do the second gear will stick it nice and easy for the first few corners. Should have clear road, at least for a little while before we start catching cars. Right down to second gear. Right against the wall there, car slides a little bit. Fast left handed flick here. Tighter one on the exit. Just clip the dirt on the inside, don't want to do that too much, but down to first gear for the tight right hander. A late apex left hander. the smoother parts of the circuit so we're going to take as much advantage of it as we can to start the lap with the clear track trying to make up as much time as I can on the cars up front down a second gear right against the guardrail there don't want to overstep the bounds don't see any cars still on the road up there so be clear track for a while first here, try to get a nice exit, it's on to one of the few straightaways on the whole course until the end of the lap, to third gear, we can almost grab fourth here but we'll keep it in third, oh, a yellow flag ahead, alright, take it easy through these blind corners, want to keep a lookout for any cars stopped in the middle of the track, not seeing anything, down to first gear, it's hard to tell what's a car parked next to the track and what might be on the track. Alright, come out there, see a house with a big Nino banner on the side. It's no secret who the crowd's favorite is here. Now, a long right-handed corner. Get on the brakes a bit early. Get it down to second gear, try to find an apex after the bollards. Tight left, down to first gear, easy to run wide on, but plenty of runoff if you do. Not too bad through there, getting closer to Cherda now. Still nice clean road in front. Car feels like it's starting to come alive a bit with the tires. Counter steer there now. See the buildings peeking out, spectators gathered. There's the sign, the entrance of Cherda. So try to keep it tidy through here for multiple reasons. Down to first gear. Now through the town proper. Sidewalks on either side, lamp posts whizzing by. Just nip the sidewalk on the inside. Don't want to do that too much. Come down to the town hall, break to first gear, get it on the main strip through town past the gas station on the right. Crossroads make little jumps on the straightaway. But flat out now, still no cars in front. Grab fourth gear just for a second. Now heavy braking, down a third, down a second for the exit of the town. A little fast there. Come around to the right, leave the town, pass through a little village here. And through some lazy left and right handers jump in the middle. Go to the last one here, down to second gear. And put it towards the first real hairpin on the course. We'll deviate away from this road we've been on and take the road up to Sclafani Bagni now. It's a much more twisty road, believe it or not. Worse surface as well. It's got a lot of bumps in parts of it. So just trying to take the car easy, it almost feels like it has less grip, actually. Through some switchbacks, hidden blind corners around walls. Retainer walls on the outsides. Trying 
get a little speed on the exit. This right-hander lead onto a slightly faster part. I want to use the speed of the 4GT where I can just a dab of the brakes there. Come up to another chicane, but this one's got a wall and a guardrail, so I'll take it easy on this lap. Car gets a little skittish coming in. Right-hander here. Just need to slow down a bit more than you'd think. It can spit you out into that wall quite easy. First gear, this right hander still on a sign of traffic ahead. Could mean the car is directly in front of me or quite quick or I'm not going quick enough, we'll see. Oh, right to the edge of the track, almost grabbing one of those bollards. Could blow a tire or worse. Alright, there we go, there's a couple cars up there. Two actually. Back to back. Focus forward, you can't do much about them until we get to them. Right down to second gear. It's still been pretty smooth so far, but some of the bumpy sections are coming up. Long right hander here on the inside cover a wall there on the exit. Keep it in second gear there, the car has a lot of torque, even at low RPM to pull you out. First gear can just kind of upset the car. Get it down to first though for this corner. And head into a forested section. You remember sections of the track by some of the unique scenery. This is the part with trees. Flat out here to third gear, slide the car through a little bit. Up to a kink. Heavy on the brakes, but keep it in third. Down to second here. Missed the exit a bit, but the road's starting to get a bit bumpy. Are unpredictable in spots. Here we go, there's a big bump. Kicks us out wide. A little crest there. Right down to second gear. Not pulling in quite as fast as I'd hope on the cars in front. Come past a sign that says something about the unevenness of the road through this ravine. Up the other side, I want to be careful. This can spit you out into the wall quite easily. There's two alphas in front. Down to first gear. So hopefully we'll catch him in a good spot and they'll just wave me by. Different classes, we're not even racing each other. Turn another big bump there. Almost unsuitable for cars of these types. handed hairpin. Keep your eye on the road signs. They help a lot to understand exactly what the track might be doing. So try to piece it all together in your mind. At the top of a rail here. Bridge in front. Track narrows across it a little bit. This one's quite wide. of right-handers. Part of the brake, second gear still. Go up to the narrowest and bumpiest part of the circuit, first gear. It's almost a single lane wide. Dip out of the trees. Try to get a good exit, have a small run. There we go. Down to second gear. These two are nose to tail. It's going to make it challenging to get past two cars at once. We're 
headed downhill now towards the Sclafani Bagni hairpins. A little hot there. Slide the car through. A little chicane, keep it tidy. So we'll come to the first hairpin down a first. There's two sets of hairpins. Move our way down the hill to the second hairpin of the first group. This is two in front. The third car in front too. Sneak up the inside. The first alpha lets me in. him across a really narrow bridge here walls on either side jet out we'll go way up the hill it's not a place you'd really want to get past these walls on either side into the second set of hairpins now so I can get up the inside oh, late move there but able to do it oh, I got run into a little bit the car's all right. Feels okay. Don't want to run off to the right here. It's a big ravine. Coming up on a smaller car in front, GT car then. So it might be one of the other alphas. The GTA. Alright, it's Alancia actually. Alright, Fulvia in front. Should be able to pass him pretty quickly, I'd imagine. Some debris on the track there. So we'll weave our way up. On this right hander. It's the exit towards Scafani Bagni. So we'll pass that and carry on towards Calta Vetturo. It's a very twisty part of the track, and the Lancia is not even that much quicker than we are at this point. Really close to the bollard on the inside. It's a little quicker corner than you'd think it'd be that one. a curved bridge. Car bottoms out there a bit. Want a soft suspension for this track because of all the bumps, but it can't be too soft. It's in those spots where you bottom out. It's sticking on the back of the Fulvia, but he's not even holding me up yet. Come down to first gear, it's a tight one. Taking the wrong line there, but get away with it. one of the many crew areas along the track. So you don't have to go all the way back to the pit lane if you have an issue. If your crew is parked out somewhere else. All right, road's gonna flatten out a little bit, not as bumpy here. As we work towards Cultivatoro. Anytime we have the higher speed section, we pull right up on the Fulvia. Quite quick through the corners. Get tough to pass. Have to lunge at some point. Unless he lets me by, certainly you'd want to wave somebody by in this situation. He's doing his own race too. Right against the fence on the inside there. Right. Cultivatura in the background towards another few hairpins, we'll be able to get them here. So we won't make contact this time up the inside, down to first gear, gives me the space. Right, rocket away past the Fulvia, I got another car in front again. Luckily able to get them on the hairpins where the car is probably pretty quick. Right, weave our way around here. towards the bridge. It's a very narrow bridge, so take it quite slow on the entry. Right, work up the hill. This is where the road dips away from Cultivatoro. We'll take the left, go towards Scalato. Right, new road now. This one's a bit smoother, but quite tricky through the mountains. Come past another crew area in front. Guy Ligier's got some crew there if we really need them. Our 
main crew is back at the start finish. Car in front just dancing through the S's here. So we're both catching another car. This is first laps all about just getting through this traffic smoothly. Trying to grab first through here next time. It's the grunt though of the engine. Closing in slowly on this Alpha. Pretty quick through the twisty stuff, but straight line speed is no match. Right out to the edge of the track. Oh, we got two more cars in front. Get downhill now. Get away from the narrow sections with only walls next to the track. We're all being held up quite a lot here now. We've got a Ferrari in front. Just surprising, maybe having an issue. So we can work by this group, but I'll put the car in a bad position. It's still a long race ahead really at the very start of it, so I don't want to do anything to throw it all away. Almost to a crawl through a triple right-hander. I think it's a little squirrely there. Couldn't take advantage of it. Sharply downhill now, I'll actually come up to another series of hairpins. Right out to the wall. Just don't want to be right on the bumper. Oh, a car in front. He spins a bit. All right, able to get the Alpha at least. Got a, other cars closing up behind is being held up. Seems like the Ferrari 250 is way off the pace, maybe a cylinder down or some engine issue because the Fulvio is sticking right with him. All right, we'll come up to a hidden hairpin here. Well, Fulvio ran a bit wide as well, down to first gear. Long left-hander. Second gear here, a bit fast on the entry. Make it work right on the back of the Fulvia now. Call it to another hairpin here. Try to stick it up the inside, just it gives me enough space. Probably thinking I'll just hold him up as well. I'm gonna get by the Ferrari 250 here quickly. We've got another bridge, it's a really narrow one as well, down to first gear. that. Now we got a short run here past another crew area. Let's bring this towards Scalato. It seems like he's got decent straight line speed. It's the corners where he's down. Which unfortunately is most of the track. Alright, little run here. He's quite quick there challenging to get by. Got the same type of performance. Slow in the corners, fast in the straightaways. Try to dive up the inside of the road, veers off there towards Scalato. We've got the Fulvia back on us as we get into the twisty stuff. Trying to clip the Ferrari. So you remember patience. Another look at it. Come up here to a hairpin. Up the inside, leaves the door open, maybe thinking better of it. Alright, we'll try to rock it away. the first exit towards Scalato. We're just about halfway 
around the lap at that point. Second half the lap is quicker though, thanks to the straightaway at the end. By no means out of the woods yet. Another hairpin here to the right. Ferrari's still back there, but we're trying to pull on him through this twisty stuff. To the final hairpin. Scalato exit as well to the right. Merge onto another road now towards Colazano. Alright, finally some free track in front. Nobody breathing down my neck from behind. But a very tricky part of the course. some farm fields. They're not really flat now, but there will be farm fields. Let's work towards the village of Borgo Eras. Let's try to be smooth through here. Very easy to run wide at any point. Clip the walls, play ping pong. So it's easy. There's a guardrail right on the inside. Another curved bridge over a ravine. So no cars directly in front got past quite a few of the GT cars that had started in front of us there. So hopefully if we do meet any more traffic, they're not super slow. there for a second. These corners look very samey as part of the circuit, so deep into the mountains too is not one. See there's a guardrail there, it's easy to trip you out. Get it up the gears, come to the top of the hill. Work down now past Borgo Eras, farming village. Smoothing out, being quite rough on the gas and the brake, just trying to make up time, but ultimately being smooth should be quicker and more safe. A little slow there, could have kept in the throttle around another ravine. So we'll start to get close to Colazano, the second real town that we go through during the lap over some of the bumps here. First gear at the top of the hill. gear right around the inside. Maybe we could go a bit quicker through there. Just keep it nice and steady. Definitely pulled a big gap on the cars behind, but not seeing anybody in front yet. down the hill now, so will tighten up a bit and start getting more forested. Past another narrow bridge. Small straight section. Really dive into the forest here, getting very close to Golazano. Tricky entrance to the tr to the city. Pull 
crossing the throttle a little bit there. Quite tentative on the gas. Just trying to keep it out. There's one tight right-hander coming up. Need to make sure we break enough for right now with the guardrail on the side. quite tight. There's a crew spot on the outside. I almost run into the wall there. But now we're through the last couple of switchbacks. It'll set us towards Golazano. There we go. We do have a chicane on the entry of the village. The town, very much the same as Cherda. Sidewalks, spectators. To make sure we don't run wide. First gear here at the bottom of the hill. Let's throttle up just for a moment. Come up to the famed Golazano hairpin. Smile for the cameras and then work our way through. You can hear some cars maybe behind me. We'll head towards the exit of the town. Sidewalks still on the side, need to be careful not to hit those. Very easy to upset the car. Alright, but this will spit us out now. On a long run downhill towards the ocean. So there we go, exiting the town. On a long run towards the ocean, very difficult part of the circuit. Towards Campo Felice. left and right handed hairpins. See, there's quite wide viewing in some parts of this area, so we'll see if we can spot any cars ahead. Imagine not making up great time through this section as I was at the start of the lap. More about survival to get down the mountain, to get onto the straightaways where we'll have a lot of extra pace. the guardrails. Go fast where you know you can. Slow down. Make sure you make it through some of the tighter corners. First gear for this left-hander. Make up a lot of time through here. Just another crew area there. Decently smooth through here as well, which helps. A little chicane. Just watching for cars maybe coming up behind too, as I know. Not as quick as I could be through here. I think we've got a good enough gap on the Ferrari and Alphas behind. A double right-hander right on the edge of grip. down the road there's no cars so we found ourselves a nice pocket here got through some of the slower traffic so it's not been a bad opening lap we hand it over to Ginther hopefully he'll also have a clear track and know he can put in some good time past some of these villas so the ocean will start to come into view Right-hander, don't want to run wide here. It's guardrails on the outside. This corner, easy to run wide on as well. Another crew area to the outside. Down a dirt road there. Too hot into that left-hander now sweeping right-hander. Spectator.
spectator viewing on a hill would be an excellent spot to see the race. Wide viewing angles. Verge to the right here away. And towards Campo Felice. downhill keeping the car clean most important spectators picking up now and laid out in front. Breaking a bit early there for this left-hander. Just a couple more switchbacks though. Tight left-hander here. Right through chicane, there's the wall retainer wall at the start of the town. So once again come through a town that will blast down the middle of Campo Felice. Spectators pick up. If you want to see the cars going fast, great place to do that up close. We're coming to the town though. Get into second gear. Left and then right. To the church. Down to first gear here. Long double apex left hander. Spit us out. We'll head down a short run down this hill towards the highway. Tidy through here. For the speed over a bump there a little more chicane to negotiate up to fourth gear all right we'll merge onto the highway going for nello got one kink to the left and then flat out we're in fourth gear and finally a chance to relax a little bit we'll get up to fifth gear though flat out at over 180 miles an hour just look forward to we're gonna catch up to any cars. We'll have so much more speed than some of the slower cars here. Hold it right about 6,500. We're not geared super tall, just need that extra speed through the mountains. We're blasting along and we'll prepare ourselves for Infernello, town, chicane, quite a scary section so easy to get it wrong. Pass some spectators on the edge of the track who want to see all the cars at their top speeds. And some houses at the start of the section break down a little bit early. Get it into fourth gear. Go to a chicane up to the right. Down to third, we get some yellow flags waving. We want to see a slow car ahead. Looks like an Alpha. Should be able to get past him pretty easily. I don't know if he had an issue through there. All right, we'll get through Bornfinello flat out again just for a minute. Up to fifth gear again. Luckily got the five here. Down to fourth. Come towards the end of the lap. Still some tricky corners ahead. Third gear. To the left through the last crew area before the pit straight. We'll, we'll stop, we'll give the car to Richie Ginther for lap two. Through some of the switchbacks, still have a few hairpins to go. 
track never gives you anything. All right, down to second gear. Up to the hairpin. Daring Marshall on the track there. Folks think of the straightaway as the last part of the track. There really is quite a lot after it. We'll come take a look over the rail station here. A couple of corners. This corner deceptively tight. It's the rail station where all the teams have been over the past week. We'll out to the final rail corner to complete the first lap. We'll head to the pit lane, swap out with Ginther and take a look if we can quick everybody's been. And so after the completion of lap number one, handing the car over to Richie Ginther to take his lap around the circuit, we'll take a look at the times being reported so far. Nino Vaccarella, of course, turning in the quickest time up top with 33 minutes, 22 seconds time around the circuit. Super fast, competitive time. Obviously had no traffic to contend with, but uh, handing that car over to Bandini, if he can keep it on the road, it should be a good result for them. The Ferrari 250 GTO in second place with a 34 minute, 38 second lap, not too far ahead of Guichette and Baghetti's Ferrari 206 Dino. So it's Ferrari 1-2-3 right now as the times are reported. We'll see if they can stay up there. We've crawled our way up all the way to fourth position. Axelson and Ginther with the 4 GT with a 36 minute and one second lap. Obviously being held up in the middle of the lap, passing a lot of the GT and slower cars uh, and having a tentative run down the hill through Campo Felice. I think another couple of laps out, we can actually pull in some of that time, but only three or a little under three minutes off of Vaccarella's time after the first lap. The times trail off from there, but we've had a few notable DNFs. Ligier hasn't come around, so they've stopped out somewhere on the circuit in the other 4 GT. And amongst a few others, Marese and Mueller's Porsche 906, the car that won the real race, didn't make it around either. So we'll find out at the end of the race maybe what befalled them, but quite a few cars out of the race, and the battle up front is very tight. So as Ginther comes back in the pits, he was able to get around in just under 38 minutes. So a couple minutes slower than I was, but he was stuck behind a Porsche 906 for a good amount of the lap, uh, able to ultimately pass them and move on. That slides us down to fifth 
in the running order as it calculates right now. Vaccarella still on it, a little bit slower of a lap the second time around uh, from Bandini driving, but 34 minutes there. They're just over an hour and seven minutes total so far. Uh, the 206 has taken over second place with Guichet and Baghetti driving. And then the Ferrari GTO with Marsala is in third place overall, rounding out the podium. We do have an Alpine, an A110, a small rally car, really, that slipped into fourth place overall. They're just a few tenths ahead of us, so hopefully I can put in a good lap and take that position over. But it just goes to show that driver can be more important than the car at the Targa Florio. So with just one lap to go, the top 10 are within 10 minutes of each other. So it's an extremely close race. It'll all come down to this final lap and how quickly we can get around the Targa Florio. All right, so we're rolling out of the pits here to start the final lap of the Targa Florio. Trying to get away. We got new tires on the car with that pit stop. We did the driver change. Trying to give us the edge, take a few extra seconds in the pits, see if that pays off on the track. The car's a bit lighter now on fuel than it was at the start. Just try to carve our way up to Cherda here. Still main goals to finish the race, but I feel like a podium is very possible. We'd have to be so much quicker than Vaccarella and Bandini to catch them. I don't think that's going to be possible, but we'll just put in the best lap possible. Should be a lot less traffic here. You may not even see other cars. Just a pure lap driving. Piccolo del Marine. Bit wide there, right up to the bollards. Right. Car's not quite as stuck as I thought. Luckily, Ginther was able to get around that 906 at the end of the last lap. But there's still a few cars ahead of us on the circuit, even though we're fourth overall. Doesn't need more fourth on track, so we may catch slower car to round that bend now for the flat section flat out section third gear the top of the hill keep it in third Just let the car settle can't run wide here we got walls right next to the track right down a second gear Spectators that wouldn't know who's leading, who's doing well. Just that the cars look awesome flying through the countryside. Very heavy for this tight left hander. Alright, so the run up to Cherda going well. This is one of the easier parts of the circuit do as good as possible through here. Maximize the time. Come through the chicane. Head into the city. Car gets a little light there. At the exit of the corner. Past the spectators. Just up to third for a second. Slide the car through. A little sideways, but the spectators won't mind that. Down to the town hall. Down to first gear. We've got nobody in front of us as we head onto the straightaway right to the edge of the curb. Flat out through the streets. Fourth gear. Trying to lock the tires as they get a little light over the bumps. Onto, I believe it's called second gear, right to the edge of the walls, up to the hairpin, peel off, head towards Sclafani Bagni. Oh, we do 
do have a car in front of us. It's like a 906. So we'll have to pass him. Hopefully, I can do it better than Ginther did. So tough, though. They're not very slow. After all, the car that actually won this race. I don't think it's that team. They're out of the race after the first lap. Trying to come through this little chicane. Now six goes quite quick through there. To the right hand or over the hill. Down a second, down a first. So down to 58. car. It's going to be pretty quick through the corners. Don't have as much power as the Ford GT. Very low to the ground. Lower than even the Ford GT is. Dip our nose in there, but not going to be able to get by. sections harder to push for taking on blind because the bumps will throw you wide. Stick it in there, can't. Another hairpin up here, but it takes a line in the middle. Might have a chance here on these faster straights through the forest section. it in. There we go. Around the inside. Let's try to get a gap on him now. Flat out. Should have an easy time of it through this section. Alright. Dispose of him quicker than Ginther did. Kept it clean too. Let's hope we don't catch anybody else the rest of the lap. in good corners. It can be easier to follow another car, of course, just matching their braking, but ultimately it'll slow you down quite a lot unless they're just the same speed as you. Go through the valley section again here. Get into third for a second, down a second, just slow it down, keep it tidy. gear. Lock up the tires just a little bit. That's why I thought it'd be good to take new tires for the final lap. Just two laps of lockups and pushing the tires quite a lot through this type of circuit. anybody in front of us or behind. We've really broken away from that 906. Tight hairpin here. Rescue myself out of it. It's the faster right-handers. Making a few mistakes here, but no major ones yet. to make mistakes, just don't push quite hard enough through a corner and it all adds up. To be within 10 seconds of the lead going into the final lap, I think it's a job well done so far. Let's see if we can close it out. Maybe get a podium, you never know. Oh, we got another car in front too. Let's come to this really tight section. Overall 
so far though, not stuck in traffic too much like we were the last lap. We'll see how the rest of the lap plays out as we get up to these hairpins and things. It slowed us down so much last time through the first lap. There a little bit on the entry. Come into the Sclafani Bagni section. Closing in, I think it's another 906. Power out of that corner quite well. Leaving sections here as we'll work our way up the hill towards the next switchbacks. Power slide there. Not intentional, but always looks cool. Just trying to get on the throttle just a little too soon. Even though this is the lower powered Ford GT40, it's still got quite a lot under the right foot. It hangs out wide, I should have taken that. Come past the funny Bogni exit. place to get by up here. With any luck, Vaccarella will hit the back of the pack, the slowest GT cars at the end of the lap, but it's a lot to wish for. To a couple tighter corners, get it on the inside here. You know, there's a wall there too, you gotta be careful about. This is turning out to be pretty similar to the last lap, but I think it's a little bit quicker than the alphas were. To get by here soon, we can pass one of the pit stop points. not too far up the road. A few straight sections towards there. Should be able to power past the 906. Oh, it brakes quite heavily. Not able to get it on the inside. bit. It's got an easier time to throw it through some of these switchbacks. It's also very hard to follow somebody closely through all this. We'll come up to another set of hairpins. Maybe I can get them there. Just nip the back of them, I think. All right, get up the inside. Just a little wide. There we go. All right past the 17. Let's see if we can get through the gap. Around too deep into the hairpin there. Easy to do. Easy to just lock the tires and slide straight into a wall. Already a nice gap on the 906. Towards the bridge now. Go to Vittoro. Up in the distance there. road now towards Colazano by way of 
Auto. All right, third gear. This is a challenging section of the circuit. Just not quite solid enough to push super hard through it. And the track is it's fast enough where you really need to be on top of it for some of the corners. A lot of these tight, twisty sections with walls on both sides. Really easy to set. Set a wheel wrong. Break the suspension. Find that attention sign. Sliding there. Still see clear road in front, which is good. Despite not pushing super hard through there, can still pull away from the 906, so no idea how that pace compares to Vaccarilla. I have to hope it's maybe faster than the Alpine at least. Just want to push a little bit more through there, but it's easy to run wide. up very close call there so easy to go off into the ditch right-hander get you off guard just like the hairpin at the end of this section it's a triple there Get confused on the gears for a second does weave quite close to itself here, so probably down, down low. Run a bit wide, luckily grass there, making a couple mistakes now. Need to gather it back up, time to push and be solid and smooth. A lot of opportunity here for mistakes which don't end the race and gotten away with a few so far I'm pushing my luck. I pass the rest area there, we'll head up the hill towards Scalato now. through the lap once again. That's the exit of Scalato, got two of them through a very tight section. No signs of cars ahead though. So I think we're making okay time despite the couple of mistakes. We really need to keep all four on the road. Much easier 
you're not following cars through here this time. Terrible place to be stuck in traffic. A bit wide, tight, double right-hander. Bring us to the final hairpin for this section. The last exit towards Skilato. All right. Get up the hill now towards Golazano. This lap is so far quicker than my first, but too much. I think I was quicker right out of the gate on the first lap. Not stuck behind as much traffic. Work up past the farm field, past Borgo Eras, not too long. It's a couple tricky chicanes as a part of this section to watch out for. This is one of them. And the Armco is the one I'm worried about. All right, go over the curved bridge. Lock down a little bit, second gear, keep it in though. Another switch back there, that one's not as hard. a little bit but it actually helps out. Fences now. This one so easy to run wide into that armco. Down to first gear as we'll come to the top of the hill. Right, past Borga Eras there. to the Armco, slide it through a bit better than the last time through here. Probably about the same. First gear not needed there. It's the next one, this one. Easy to over anticipate a corner. It's the power of the engine for a short stretch there. One right hander over the top of the hill. Descend back down. Start working towards Colazano itself now. No sign of any cars in front still. Some of the retirements help clear up the track too. Bridge. Just trying to keep it nice and smooth. Don't overheat the tires, slide them too much. Into the forest again.
Zion Hill section. Before we get to the town itself, easy section to overdo it. There's that hidden double right hander. There it is. Got me this time. Or I got it this time. All right, coming to the town itself, there's the marker for the speed change on a normal day. Today, unrestricted. Get into second for the chicane on the entry just to cut down the speed. Cut through the long left-hander. First gear at the bottom of the hill to the right. Flat out for a minute now towards the hairpin. No power out of it. Spectators right at the edge of the circuit there. It's been a thrilling place to stand. through the exit of the city, come up to the tricky final part of the course. There we go, exit Colazano, and now start heading downhill towards Campo Felice for the final time. through here. I think I easily lost 10 seconds off a good lap time last time through here. So imagine if I can pick that up. Don't want to overdo it so close to the finish line. Throw everything away. and tidy so far, not super quick, but not super slow either. So we down, just don't want to lock up the brakes and slide wide. Let's slow through there, carry slightly more speed. Tricky one, lock up the brakes a bit there. First view of the ocean. So far, so good. Up to third gear. Probably about halfway down now. Past some of the villas. where you don't know the road perfectly. Just give it a little extra space. So easy to overstep the bounds. Hope to make it up elsewhere. Fortunately, the 330 is not going to be much slower on the straightaways than the GT40 Mark I we're driving. We can hope to put together a good rest of the lap or that they've had maybe a little trouble with traffic or something us that edge. Some skid marks on the track there. Verge away to the right here.
the bottom of the mountain now. proper now I can really see it the slower corners still plenty of S's left cultivator not too far ahead now Second, a little bit fast on the entry there for a second, but gather it up. All right, spit out finally of the woods into the town itself. Try to slide too wide on the entry. Got the second gear for this transition. It's a little bumpy down here. Easy to get the car crossed. Oh, we're still going to run a bit wide. Up to the cathedral. Down to first gear. Double left-handers. Run right to the curb on the exit. Won't be kind on the tires. We don't need them for too much longer. Alright. Through this right-hander. Just a few corners to go before the straightaway open up gradually through a little S it's a fourth gear spit us out onto the highway just this one kink to negotiate Get a breath there we go Look at the straightaway then point it towards the mountain head on home up to fifth gear, really rev it out. We don't need the engine for too much longer. Right down the middle of the road. Can't see any cars in front. Don't have any to deal with for the Bordfinello chicanes. Right, right at the top of the rev range. Over 190 miles an hour. Flat out. Just a few houses and just try to spot breaking zone will begin. It's coming up here. Get it down. Oh, too soon. Too soon. There we go through the village itself. No matter. Just try to stick on it through the final sector. Down to third gear. Accelerate out, make up. Lifting there towards the end of the straight. Up to fifth gear. Down back to fourth. this pit area. Use a little bit of the apron there. So third gear. Weave it on through here, the final part of the lap. The lap's been alright. A few mistakes. A silly one there on the straightaway right towards the end. Just what we're anticipating. So easy though. On the fast corners to run it too deep, going to the final hairpin. To the third gear then. This flick here. Final chicane. What a yellow flag. Down to first gear, tight corner. Not sure what the yellow flag will be for. Alright, but we'll come past the garages. Down to 
kind of second gear for the final corner. Final real corner. And then guide it through to where it all began three laps ago. Past the start finish line to finish the Targa Florio. And with that, the epic race is done. We'll take a look at the results. Nino Vaccarella has come away the victor with a total time of one hour, 40 minutes, 41 seconds. He turned out his fastest lap of the race at 33.15 once he got back in the car for the final lap, for the final stint. The Ferrari 250 GTO of Marsala and Riala finishes second, just six minutes and some change off of Vaccarella and Bandini's time. So not too bad overall in the 250 GTO. And then come the two Alpines, the surprise or maybe not surprising, depending on how well you know this event and cars, but both Team Alpine cars able to finish in the top five, one on the podium. And there you see us back in fifth position overall, Axelsen and Ginther finishing fifth in our initial Targa Florio fell back another position, but all in all, pretty satisfied with the lap. It came out to be a 37.47 for the final lap. There was a pit stop at the start of it, so it was a little bit quicker than that. Not as quick as my first lap on the track, but overall, pretty satisfied with it. Just had a couple minor incidents along the way. Bringing the car home at the Targa Florio is no small task. And just like that, Ferrari gets their first win of the sports car season for the over 2000 CC class. Uh, coming away with nine points there and finally getting a win on the board. I did collect two points for Ford, so I'm sure Ford will be happy with that as we head to the next rounds. The next sports car race won't be until the end of May. We've got a busy time between now and then. So until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you all again later.